G'day everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Pierre and this is Simple Homebrew. Doing another wine today. I'm doing a wine code Cabernet Sauvignon. It's an Australia edition. It's got a heavy little weight thing. This is the, a bit like the uh, other ones I do. This is brought into Australia by Kegland. And uh, we've got a lot to do today, so hopefully you can stick around. Cheers. Disclose you guys, all the products I'm using today are purchased by myself through the generosity of my Patreons and through Google videos. Kegland are not affiliated with Simple Homebrew. I'm just doing this because the products seem to be pretty good and uh, I enjoy making stuff. On saying that, if you do want to support the channel, that'd be great. The money you support me with will help go back into the channel and hopefully showcase some products that you guys might be wanting as well. I got onto this product watching Kegland's video on the wine. I thought, wow, they've got a new product and I want to try it out. So I bought it. Um, <laughs> I know that I can get it locally still. Uh, there is a brew shop in Trogon called Greenleaf Hydroponics and Homebrew. They are in Church Street, I believe, in Trogon. And they're a good little store. There's only one person running called Karen. And I would urge you guys to go check it out. It's a really good little store. And I think anybody local here would benefit from it. I'm going to open this up. We'll see what's inside. You're recording it. I just want to gently open it. It's really well sealed, actually, looking at what I'm doing here. So that's your little tap hole. So I'll get into that in a minute. So these guys are still using the old type boxes that wine expert we're using. Now remember this is a kit series brew kit for wine making. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get into grape squashing and making wine from scratch. It's just too complicated and I don't know, time, I don't know. Is it messy? Is it going to be a problem? It could be fun, I don't know, but you know, tell me. Would you like me to do it? I'll try and get some grape juice and do it that way. But anyway, that's all bullshit. So we've got the regular little packs. You've got your packs of uh, clearing agents, some oak granular, uh, granular oak, and some more chips as well, oak chips. So I've got oak, granular oak and oak chips, which is pretty common with these things. I have a caps have, oh, I forgot to tell you. As you know, in the last video, I did a caps have by Wine Expert, and now this is gonna be a comparison to both. So the Wine Expert one, actually has the same type of ingredients in it. So I'm going to do these and compare them later on. And uh, when I bottle them and age them, I will do a comparison. These wines sit in an insulated box uh, under my bench in my shed. And they do sit up to a year and a half. I've also got wines from two years ago sitting, and sometimes I crack them open and go, oh my God, they come out great. You know, two years later, they say it tastes better than they did a year before. Aging wine is just awesome, just do it. Anyway, uh, got our bag. This is our bag of uh, juice. These are eight litre container. No, sorry, these are 10 litre juices. So that's our juice. I'm not gonna take it out uh, just so I don't get the trouble of putting it back in, but I will set this up so I can actually pour it. And the first thing I'll do is take off the little tags that they supply in the box, which is really convenient. I'll tell you now, if you try to pour this out freehand, your little bladder will take off on you and it'll be very hard to control when you pour it. If you do it this way, I can tell you now, you would definitely not have any issues controlling the way you pour your extract, I suppose, or your, your concentrate back into your fermenter. So I'll pop that through, just quickly lock it in place so we can have more control. Right, so I probably shouldn't have taken this tab out, but I did, but I did, so what am I gonna do? Okay, grab that, pop that in the rubbish. So what I'm putting this into today is a fermenter. I actually bought this for my daughter a while back and I loaned it to somebody and they had it for a while and never used it and I just got it back off them. Um, it's just a normal fermenter and I'm gonna try a Plato, airlock again, see how it goes. I've been having trouble getting it to work properly. I'm gonna give it one more go, and if it doesn't work, I'm gonna sell it. <laughs> right. So as you know, we've got a whole heap of equipment that we have to put in this. Also, we need to make sure these little buckets are spotless clean. They have to be spotless clean. 
the issue of not having it spotless is you can contaminate your brew and cause some ongoing issues in the future. And uh, we really don't want that. So I'll just open her up. I'll open her up. <laughs> Very tight. I put grease around the uh, rubber seal and around the lip, but it still tends to get stuck. Put that outside. We've got some sanitizer in here. I've already cleaned out the bucket. And I've thrown sanitizer in there to, to sanitize it as well. We are putting hot water in here. I'm just being doubly sure. So I'll tip that out. So I'll tip that out into a, um, a fermented I have ready for another brew that I'm going to do soon. So that will be all right. So it's okay to have like a star sand or stellar sand sanitizer. It's a acid base, minute diluted uh, chemical or bat acid. It won't harm your beer, it, uh, your wine, sorry. Um, the wine or the yeast will actually thrive on it. It really enjoys it. So it eats it. It's like a nutrient for it. So in the packet, you'll get your, what is that? Kytosan. You get a sachet of, sachet of EC118, which nearly all of them have. An instruction manual. Now, in the instruction manual, I urge you guys to open it up, check it out, read it thoroughly. There's a lot in there you need to know. Uh, record the things down if you're new at it. Record it all down if you don't know what you're doing. And make sure you do take uh, measurements, your gravity readings as you go, or you know when you finish doing the, that part of it. You got Kaisersol, which is another additive that you need to put in to clear it out. Uh, sulfate, sorbate, and sulfite sorbate. So we've got a packet of that, and bentonite, which is what we need to do now. The way I'm going to do it, and the way the instructions are starting to say to work with, is I'll fill the kettle up with 1.7 liters, the 1.7 liter max mark. I don't, it, they say do it, do it two liters or so. My water's still pretty warm around here, so I'll go 1.7 and I'll dissolve my bentonite. I'll come back to you once I've boiled the kettle. <music> So while that kettle's boiling, I've got this wine that you just saw me pour, and it's been aging for, it's been, what, it's been two months, maybe three months now, and um, it's smelling really good. It smelled really good when I first put it in, which is awesome. I'm uh, just going to do a comparison to, with this one to the Vine Co. one that I'm about to do, but I just want to taste it now and see what it's like. It smells good. It's... um. It's losing that yeasty smell. It's disappearing. Well, it's actually gone. Now I'm getting a real fruity alcohol. You know, the boozy smells disappeared as well, which is great. Mmm. I forgot. Oh yeah. Um, this actually fermented down to about one no zero point zero nine nine six. I think something like that. Zero point nine nine six, or was it point? Oh, it was yeah zero point. 996 so it was under one and uh, it's got a fairly dry flavor to it i can taste the grape and a bit of tannin and the flavor has changed immensely it wasn't this flavor when i started so it's actually lost a little bit of sweetness now it doesn't taste like it's got carbonation of any kind usually when you degas your wines sometimes you don't do it properly and a little bit of carbonation left in it but this one definitely has no carbonation oh by the way i've got to show you i'll show you on that camera over there I've got to show you. Um, I do play in a rock band and I do go to festivals and I get these glasses when I buy wine. I buy this wine and keep the glasses. I've got about five of these now, so it's really good. And it gives me an idea. Um, this is a really nice wine, it needs more aging. But it tastes good. It's going to. I'm going to need to keep it a bit longer, and we're going to make a comparison with it. Alrighty, the kettle's boiled. I will pour this water into my fermenter. Now, bear in mind, it, these fermenters can take the heat. There's a lot that can't. So the hot water will actually kill more germs if there's any left. And now I'm going to sprinkle my bentonite in. Uh, I've done videos on this many times before, and I'm sure you guys have seen them. 
But I will continue to show you how it all works. I'll need a plastic spoon, not a metal one. A metal one scratches your plastics. So if you're going to use a plastic fermenter, make sure you use a plastic spoon, which is this one here. Sprinkle a small amount in and stir. Bentonite is a clay. It's an organic clay that has... Now people have corrected me on this. They have particles in it that are either, either positively or negatively charged. And in the future, as you brew your brews, it clings to particles in your wine. So when you throw in your benton, uh, sorry, when you throw in your kaisersol and your bent, uh, kaisersol and your kaisersan and all the other products, sulfate, sulfite, sorbate, and all that other stuff. Well, sorbate's a pretty much a preservative; it preserves it. You will be able to pull product out of the wine and clear it right out if you do it properly. So that's dissolving really nicely, actually. That's dissolving much nicer than the other ones I've done in the past. So you just sprinkle a little bit in. Um, don't be scared if it gets a bit clumpy. It will dissipate and get better. All right, so once I've finished dissolving this, we'll get to pouring in the extract or the, um, the concentrate. I'm using tap water for the top-up water. At the moment, we've got 10 litres of concentrate going in. Normally, we've got... Chlorine and chloramine in our water systems. You can use a Camden tablet. A uh, Camden tablet will neutralize that, which is what I'll do now. I'm going to grab a Camden tablet. I'm just going to crumble in a, a half of Camden, Camden tablet in the hot water while it's still hot. Should have a half one there somewhere. So a bit of advice, a bit of advice for you. Two teaspoons of the same kind, same size, same shape. It makes it so much easier, especially if you have Camden tablets. You want to crush one, but you know, I don't want to use the whole tablet in there either. So I'm going to crush it. You probably can't see it. So you squash them because they're the same shape. Oop. Oh well. <laughs> That's about three quarters of a Camden tablet that just dropped in there. Um, didn't mean that. <laughs> oh well, we make these mistakes. It will, won't do any harm. It'll just help and it will be fine. Just uh, wanted to use half just in case, you know, because Camden can be a fairly concentrated, not concentrated, but a fairly potent product. You shouldn't be using it in high doses, only small doses, um, as it is harmful to the human body if you use way too much. But this will just dissolve in this hot water now. They will become liquefied just like everything else in there. And when I put the cleaner water in, the, um, uh, the tap water, it should help to neutralize the chlorine and chloramine in it. So it will just make it inert, basically. So what I'll do now is I will pour in my concentrate. I hope you guys can see. I'm not sure if you can see it on this camera. I think you can. Yes, you can. So my concentrate is going in. I'll have to pop the lid. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. You could use uh, a opener, a teaspoon like I am, and that just opens just like I did then. So just pop on the lip. Now, a lot of them don't have a lip like that. I'm really, really happy. I've got a lip to pull up on. Made it so much easier. And because I put it into this holder here, I'm able to control the pour. Make sure your tap's closed. Make sure your tap's closed. I've done this many times before with the tap open, found it poured all over the ground, so that's a bit of advice. Anyway, in we go. Look how easy that pours and how much control you have over it. It's really, really, really good. Now, of course, there's going to be a lot of sediment left behind in your bag. So you're going to have to fill it back up. Now, we need 23 litres of juice. It is now at 10 litres. Oh, it's actually a bit higher. It's at... How many litres is that? It's 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. So it's about 11.5 litres at the moment. So there's still some concentrate left in there. I'll need to put another 10 litres easily into this 
to top it up to 21 litres, and then I'll just top it up a little bit more to 23 litres. Okay, I'm going to go fill this up. I'll come back to you once I'm done. I have a filler meter that I've gotten from Kegelane a while back. I have a food safe drinking hose that I have set up. This is used by travellers who travel across the country in their Winnebago's, things like that. It is drink water safe. It is human consumption safe, so it's great. It's, it's no, it's it's BPA free basically. I'm going to fill this up for 10 litres and uh, rinse it. Just get to the excess extract out. And then I'm going to add the chips and the uh, yeast and top it up to 23 litres. So once I'm filled, I'll come back to you. Just, disco just discovered something. Um, you can't fill it right up because it foams up and all the bubbles want to come out. I think uh, five, six litres is fine to rinse it out with. I'll do a double rinse anyway. I'll pour that in. So you can see the colour is still pretty dark coming out. And I'll do another quick rinse. I did set that to 10 litres, so I've still got another couple of litres ago. Uh, we are at... Where are we at? 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, we're almost at 20 litres. I'll use up what this already said, it'll beep in a minute. That's 10 litres. Quickly rinse that out. And we'll put it in. it's nice and clear now. So that's it. That's our extract extracted. <laughs> and, uh, Next is adding the extra additives, which are your wood chips and your yeast. The rest of it gets added at a later date. All we need to do now is just add these so that it ferments through and let it ferment, basically. Once it's finished fermenting, that's when you start adding extra clearing agents and products like that. So we'll do that in the future. So I'll crack open these bags. It's not going to open that easily. There's no tear point. I'm going to have to get the scissors onto it. I'll show you what the grain, uh, the wood grains, these are oak wood chips. I'll show you in that camera. Hopefully you can see that nice and clearly. They're in. And we also have uh, granular oak, which is really fine, fine cut oak chips basically they're pretty much the same thing but i'd say the reason you use these is it extracts a lot more scent and it looks like it's a different grade of the oak or different part of the oak wood placing so that's our oak granulars they smell a little bit different as well much lighter in color they get mixed in as well so the temperature of what we call now is must is at around about 24 Three, 22 degrees Celsius. It's perfect, really. I now need to top this up to 23 litres. We're at 21. I need two more litres to go in. So this is now set to two litres. We'll just quickly top that up. That helps mix it, aerate it, and everything else while we're going. Oop, I'll wash the edges off while I'm at it. This shouldn't take long to top up to 22 litres anyway. Now, people do it anyway. I'll, I mean, I could stir it in if you want. But, you know... It's pretty much stirred in by aerating anyway. So we've got one more additive to put in, and now I'm going to say to this to stress to you, I probably should have been using sanitizer on a lot of products, because things are handled by people in factories and area, every other area. I didn't do it this time. Wine isn't so susceptible to bacteria. It seems to be much heartier. Uh, I guess it's because it's a higher grade of alcohol, a higher end. It's got more alcohol in it. We'll just sprinkle that on top. Now I'm going to stir that in. There you go, there's our yeast. That's all we have for all this. You know, you see, um, this is very sweet. This is what, oh, I just noticed it's um stuck to the side, look. Get it all in there. Um, I just noticed, so, when people make beer, they tend to put in two sachets of yeast. But when it comes to winemaking, they don't even recommend it. 
it really is a strange phenomenon. I don't know what's going on. These will be high in sugar levels. I'll spray this down because it now is cold. And I want the this to be sanitized before I put it in now. So there's our yeast. Stir it through. fairly dark looking wine actually it's going to be really sort of purpley color so there you go that's stirred in the next step is to put the lid on and put the airlock on now I have a Plato airlock I've had some experiences with it so far and it still hasn't really fulfilled my needs so I'm being a bit skeptical about it being any good still so I tighten that on so there's no air leaks. Now this Plato, I'm still experimenting with, so I'm not going to do any steps on how I'm doing it. I'm just going to keep working with it until it works. And that's my pretty much my airlock. This is what I'm going to use as an airlock from here on in. Right now I'll just block it for now while I get the Plato ready. So I've got a standard airlock with a little bell on top. I'll just fill it up a little bit with um, sanitizer. About halfway. While I set up my airlock, my Plato airlock. Crap, drop the bell in, drop that into its little hole. Make a bit of sanitizer in there as well to help it lube. And that's it. Now we've got everything locked in for fermentation. What I need to do right now is take a quick sample and I have a hydrometer which will determine what level my wine or my must is so I know what it's going to be when it's finished. So I'm going to fill up my beacon. I'll do that right now. I'll do this off camera just quickly and I'll come back to you. All right, I didn't have to fill it all the way. It's actually quite high in sweetness this one. I'll just put it on a level surface. You guys can see that, I'm sure, yep. I'll get a photo of the reading it's got. I'll just use my phone, get a camera. That will do, and that way we can get an idea on the alcohol level it's gonna be at. And as you can probably see in this picture, there, you're looking at about 1.2. So 1.1. Yeah, 1.102, is that right? Yeah, so what I'm getting from that is 1.102. That's the uh, level of sugar that's in this wine. So it's actually quite high. A bit more than I thought. It usually isn't that high, so I'd say there's a very high concentration of grapes in there, which is really good. Um, we'll sit that at room temperature, 20 degrees Celsius, for about two to three weeks. Now, this is a six-week batch, so hopefully it will be done. You do need to age wine to make it taste better, so it might take a, a while before I actually get to taste it properly. We will be doing a tasting at the end of this video. So that's it for this part of it. Uh, in a couple of weeks time, we'll add some additives to it, let it ferment, and hopefully my Plato will work as well. So cheers guys, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay, it's, it's meant to be day 14, but um, unfortunately I've been fairly busy. So it looks like we're at three weeks later. It's about day, 21 something like that it's been sitting here waiting for me to transfer into the carboy and that's what i'll do today all right we're going to uh, sanitize everything we use and what i've got is a auto siphon i've had it sitting in the no rinse sanitizer for about an hour now um ready to go i'm just going to put it back just so you guys can see it it's an it's a auto siphon basically you put this end into your wine this little cap stops you picking up the trube at the bottom. So when you do suck the wine up and push down again, the wine will shoot up and feed into your secondary. These are really good. You can pop a tube in there, suck it, pop it in, off you go. But um, yeah, this is easier. Right, so I'll pop that back in just so it's safe and clean. 
And uh, to show you my carboy, this is a glass carboy. Now people do tell me, be really careful with these because they do shatter. Um, washing them with hot water can definitely make them shatter. So just basically use a, a cleaning product to rinse it out just to make sure it's clean. And then rinse it out with clean water and then when you go to use it, give it a good rinse to sanitise and usually that's clean enough. You can get a bucket blaster, which is something I've got now. It's going to be hopefully a time saver. But now all I have to do is get rid of the sanitizer I have in this, which I'll just tip down the drain. So as a reminder to you guys, this is no rinse sanitizer. It's a food based uh, acid. It is not harmful to you at all in the doses that it's in. 1.5 mil to one liter. That is, that's a really big dilution and it's definitely not gonna hurt you in any way. So what I'm gonna do now, recording, yep, is I'm gonna throw the carboy on the ground, just in front of my fermenter. My fermenter's up here, the carboy's here. I'm going to grab my auto siphon. This guy. Actually, no. <laughs> I'm going to now remove my Plato, oh, bloody hell, Plato um, uh, air, air um, what do you call this thing? Airlock? Now, there's another story on this one. I have used this for a while and it's only just starting to work properly. So I'm really sort of it's still experimenting with that one. One day I'll, I'll show you what it's all about. I need to remove this lid, which I knew was going to be a problem. So, oh, no, it's not a problem. Getting it off. Look at that. All right, I haven't had this open yet, so I don't know what it's like. Now, remember, I have tested this. The Plato has registered the amount of fermentation has happened, and it's actually fermented down to below one, um, so it's point one zero point nine nine something or other, but it's, I will measure it later and find out and put exactly then that's the right number above here. Okay, so this is open to the air. So we need to work a little bit quickly. I will place my, where's my sprayer? And another good hint, another good hint is to have a sprayer of sanitizer ready to go. So everything you touch from the surface is clean and sanitary. Everything is. Just uh, tip out the excess, you know. Grab the emptying end or the filling end, put it in one side. Place your auto siphon slowly and gently into your wine, trying not to stir what's on the bottom. Right, let's hit the bottom. I'll lift the I'll lift the uh, auto siphon just gently, which sucked, sucked a bit of wine, and I'll push. And there we go, our siphon has started. And that will siphon out. It'll probably take about 10 minutes to siphon out. And uh, hopefully, it's the clearest part of the wine that's going to siphon out. After I've done that, I'm going to add a couple of chemicals to kill the yeast, to uh, sterilize the wine a little bit, and just so, you know, just stop it from going off over time which is Kaisersol and Sorbate. So we're gonna pop that in. We'll probably do it in about five minutes, let it go. And uh, once, once it's full, we'll pop that in and give it a good stir. Pop it on time-lapse, we'll be done in a sec. <music> As you guys are aware it's finished it's right to the end there's a little bit like i said the sediment at the bottom a little bit of wine there but that'll, that'll that's fine that's you're not going to lose all that i've taken a sample during the uh during the transfer i took a quick sample now i'm gonna have to take this out i might have to put the pipe pull the pipe out gently so then try not to make too much mess and throw it in now when we transferred this there was a lot of uh, some sediment that kept going with it. Now that that's normal. You get rid of some of the sediment when you first transfer, but it um 
it's a start. So the next part of the secondary is to get rid of that sediment. So what I need to do now is actually add other chemicals to drag the sediment out of the wine to clear it out a bit more. The bentonite has been running in suspension in the wine now as it's finished fermenting. And now what happens is we put the sorbate, which will preserve the wine for a longer period of time and help clear it out and kill any bacteria or bugs that might be in there, but probably not, and kill the yeast. The chiasosol will attach itself to the bentonite and drag it to the bottom, which is supposed to be how it works. And tomorrow I'll put the chiter sand in, which will in turn pull more suspension out. So it will drag more sediment to the bottom, which will in turn clear it out more. I'll pop the carboy up on the bench without using the handle. The handle is quite, um, it's only held by that nozzle, so we we'll, don't want to risk breaking it. So the, the handle really helps for pouring, but you still need to support the, the glass carboy throughout the whole session. I want to get a basket for this, but I haven't been able to find one yet. So that takes time, you know, it just takes time. So the next step is to get rid of the gas. Now, as you ferment wine, it produces carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide is suspended in the actual wine. You need to stir it as well as uh, add your Kaisersol and sorbate in. We need to pop that in as well as stir it to get rid of the gas. The gas is produced from fermentation as yeast eats the sugar, it poops out, <laughs> it poops out carbon dioxide and alcohol and you know, some other byproducts, but yeah, that adds to the smell and taste of what you're drinking anyway. Um, so what we're doing is we're just basically getting rid of the gas. So the first thing I'll do is add the Kaisersol. The Kaisersol again is a, it removes, so let's see Kaisersol added and I'll have to add the sorbate as well. And we need to stir that in to our um, with a drill. Now I'll tell you about that. In, I'll tell you about that in a sec. Now I just did a tasting on a beer, and it's gone to my head. So don't worry about it. It's fine. Okay, I have a stirring stick. I made this out of a, a paddle. Have I got one here to show you? I do not. Um, I had a paddle. This looks like a spoon. It's part of a spoon. I cut it. What I'm going to do in the future is curve that like a, um, a propeller for a plane to make it more, uh, more, uh, better, to make it better. But at the moment it works fine. This needs to be sanitized. So we'll spray this down with sanitizer. Now, word of advice, get yourself a bottle, a bottle of sanitizer. Get a good one. I got this one from Autobahn in my part of the world. It's chemical safe, chemical, um, chemical, no, acid free, it can handle any kind of acid or anything like it. I'll pop this in and I'll just start stirring. What I'm doing is stirring this around so that the gas is removed. So I know this is very loud and I'll speed this up and get to the next part. Cheers. a workout um, it didn't seem like it had a great deal of gas in it, it was really good um, normally I foam up a really a, a fair bit maybe I'm reducing the amount of oxygen getting in which is great um, it's uh, wine is very hardy it can handle it um, it's smelling brilliant it's smelling woody uh, oaky and uh, I think it's gonna be good I've taken a sample as you know and now all I have to do is place a airlock on this will be on there for only maybe, I don't know, two weeks. And of course, sanitize it again. Make sure it's all fully sanitized. I have a little mat down there that can handle all this abuse that I'm making. I don't have any contamination issues when I use sanitizer, so I've been using it since I started brewing, and it's never been an issue. I think uh, it's gonna help, and it's gonna do the job. I think it's a benefit to brewing and I think you should use it too. Um, if you don't, you can use alcohol, you can use water or you can use um, what they say is sulfate and uh, 
that'll also work. I'll leave that for 24 hours now and I'll add Kytosan in 24 hours time. I did this at eight o'clock at night. I will film myself doing it and so you guys can see it. Hopefully you guys get to see the whole process. We'll see you then. Just a quick bit of information now. I've degassed this wine and if you're concerned about the flow of, um, I don't know, if you're concerned about oxygen, basically what's happening here, as you can see, the, the pressure is still excreting from the wine and pushing up into the airlock and then out through the airlock. And it's actually, as you can see, it's moving. So the gas is still coming out from my degassing, so you have no issues at all. All right, I've got a uh, Kytosan. Now, sorry guys, I had done this, I tried this already. The SD card failed in the middle of trying to pour it in. So a lot of failure is happening lately. I'm gonna pour that in. This is a big bag. Now, what I did is I sanitized it and actually cut it with my scissors. You didn't see that because the SD card failed. Not happy about it, it's about 150 mil of Kytosan. Now I've just poured that in, I'll pop the cap back on, which is sanitized, and I'll just quickly swirl that around a little bit at the top. Now hopefully, the Kytosan will work exactly how we want it. It's just stirred around at the top, it'll settle everything down, and it'll actually help bring all the sediment and the bits and pieces that are left floating in the actual wine to the bottom. That's gonna take about two weeks, maybe three. It's already worked a fair bit. As you can see, it's a little bit more purple than the bottom than it is at top. So in about three weeks time, maybe two, depends on how quickly it clears out, I will start bottling this and I'll put it away. And I do have some bottles to put it in. I have some new bottles from Kegland. These are these guys. I've got 24 glass wine bottles with three free bonus corks in it. So looking forward to uh, bottling those as well. So we'll see you then. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome to week three. I think it's been settling for three weeks. Uh, the wine pretty much is ready to bottle and that's what we're doing today. Now I have corks and you might have seen the unbottling video that I already did. Uh, that is, I'll put a link up here so you can see it. Basically, I've got to soak the corks in sanitizer, which I've done. So what I did is I've just used my, um, uh, what do you call this, this yeast, yeast bucket or yeast container and soaked them in sanitizer for a couple of hours just to get sanitizer through them, wet them down basically, and make them useful, and of course sanitize them. So as a rule, um, you normally give the bottles a good clean with uh, a cleaner, then rinse it with water, and then sanitize them. Uh, these are bottles coming from uh, a factory cleanse already, so we're just rinsing them out with sanitizer, which makes it a lot quicker and easier at the moment. Next time I'll have to do a lot, lot more uh, in depth uh, uh, clean, but at the moment it's going to be great. It's always a good idea to have your siphon above the line of your bottles. Gravity feeds the bottling wand. So if your bottles are level with the actual fermenter or um, uh, secondary, you won't get any flow of wine at all. So you're best off having it below the siphon so that the gravity can feed your bottling wand. I'm going to tip out all the excess sanitizer that are in these and start my bottling. So the first thing I first thing I need to do is sanitize my bottling wand and my siphon. So I have that 15 liters of sanitizer sitting here, so I'll use it. Uh, I use pretty thick cabling. Um, it's it, it's good for it helps to connect things easier. Just makes my job a little bit more easy. Um, this stuff is pretty good. That's my sanitized wand and flicker. I'll just empty the excess sanitizer out. As usual, you just got to get rid of the crap. All right, so this is sanitized, ready to go. You're recording, yes, and you are. What I've got to suggest to you guys is make sure that you tilt this a little bit to get the sediment to move forward a little bit on the actual bottle. Then we remove our sanitized sanitizer or airlock 
and slowly put it in our wine, trying not to stir up any of the sediment down the bottom. That's at the bottom. I'm trying to be really careful not to twist it, make it move. And now we need to take some wine out, but I need to start the pump. I need to start the siphon. So you don't need to go very high, probably that much, maybe a bit more. And it starts just like that. Just wanted to start that. So we now have wine in our siphon. So what I'll do is I'll show you how much I put in. Basically, air can get in. Uh, wine actually likes a little bit of oxygen to help age. It's not like beer. And I'm gonna fill that up until it comes out the top. It seems pretty clear. I am gonna try this later on, by the way. As you can see, it takes a little bit of time to fill the bottle. Now, I'm not, this is going to be a bit dangerous. I'm going to make a bit of a mess, but just want to show you that I'm bringing the wine to the top. Once it hits the top, I'll pull the stick out. That's enough for the cork. So I'll do all these bottles and then we'll start corking. I had to pour myself a glass. Uh, we, w I was getting, I ran out of bottles, but I did put it into a large bottle that I knew I'd run out and pour myself a fairly large glass of wine. It's cool, but I'll tell you what, when I tasted this, when I first put it in the secondary, I was a bit worried. It tasted a bit too dry and it tasted like it had fermented down a lot more than it should have. But the tasting it now, the smell is awesome. You can smell the wood grain, you can smell the oak in there. And you can smell the, um, the, the grapes and everything, it's really fresh. Now people are saying to me, you should try it from real grapes and do it from that. Now I don't have access to that, so what are you gonna do? These are awesome, they're a great alternative. And the wine smells great. I tell you what, it's not dry at all. It's actually got a sweetness to it. Very woody, not overly woody though. Very flavoursome, full of flavour. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful wine. And I'm sure over time that'll age even better. Uh, corked, locked up in a nice dark area and it'll be spot on. Cool. All right, so I'll just move this out of the way. That's for later on. And what I'm gonna do now is I need to cork all these bottles, but they're gonna kind of make a mess because they've got wine dropping, dripping at the bottom of them. So that's what this mat's for. I'm just gonna do one at a time. I will dip these into the sanitizer before I put them in their bottles. Actually, I might dip them in now so it rinses them. And then one at a time, I'm gonna do it, pop it, cork it. So where's my corks? Here are my corks. These guys have been soaking in here for a few a few hours now, so they should be spot on. I've never used a corker before, so this is a first. So I'd say I've adjusted it nicely, hopefully. Um, you guys probably can't see what I'm doing, but the cork goes in here, and there's, there's like a little tapered lip here. I don't think it matters which way it goes. Drop it in, line it up with my bottle. Jeez, I hope this works. And just push my cork in. So it didn't go in far enough, can you, as you can tell. So I'll need to adjust the depth to the height of that, which is a fair bit, to be honest. To be honest. So here we go, I'll just... Bring that up, there we go. Let's see if that's enough. All right, so with a bit of adjustments, and mucking around. Spot on. 
nice and even with the top. That's what I want. Right, we're on a winner. You know, it's crazy. I just went into my bathroom and I realized I have a hairdryer. I didn't know I had one. In all this time, I've lived in this house. I've never known I had a hairdryer in my bathroom. That's something my wife would have put there. So today, last thing I have to do is shrink this on. These are a heat shrink cap. I have to heat shrink these on. I'm gonna use a hairdryer to do it. Uh, the camera might conk out, but that's all right. Just gonna heat it up until it shrinks into place. I'm hoping that the hairdryer will be hot enough to do it. Job of that. <clears throat> um, that was the first one. So I'm um, done putting the caps on. They look awesome. They look so professional, you know. I'm going to now pop some stickers on. They gave me some labels and I wrote on them. Uh, with Vine Co. Shiraz 145522. This is the date today. And it's 14.5%. I'm going to label each bottle so we know what's in them. So when someone grabs them and says, hey, what do you got in there? And I'll go, hang on, I'll grab the bottle and I'll read the label, which is absolutely awesome. It's something that makes it more interesting. They come out really good. I'm really happy with them. They're very professional looking. Best kit I've ever worked with, uh, the wine. Is exceptional it's beautiful it's um very tasty it hasn't aged yet but it it has that you know new wine smell but that's going to go after, after after a few months but the flavor is awesome really happy with it um really good this is a kit from kegland and i also bought the bottles from kegland as well as the uh corks and everything came with the bottles with the labels well, the labels you know they're pretty crafty they're kind of old-fashioned um just be aware that if you have a moist so if you have a um, humid area you're working in, they don't stick to the bottles until the humidity drops or try and dry the bottles as you're trying to stick them on. But anyway, a kit well worth buying, uh, tastes really good. I'm gonna store these in the boxes that they came in. Uh, perfectly made for them. They got the little ridges and everything to hold the bottles apart. They're gonna leave them there, maybe six months before I even think about trying them. So thank you guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being part of this. I'll have Patreon if you guys want to fund this and see if I can make more of this product. Let me know. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.